Hey guys, Lance Crone here. I'm um, doing a video today on some metabolism secrets. Um, this is one that um, I like to teach usually in my uh, coaching group, um, specifically on getting the most out of workouts, out of your nutrition. Um, it's so much more than just burning calories um, and being at a deficit of calories for your nutrition. So because without the metabolism, um, we, uh, we're really shortchanging ourselves. Um, so what I like to do is, um, typically if I'm working one-on-one -on -one with somebody on a Skype call or something like that, um, I like to draw a triangle to show that there are three sides to, um, an effective, um, uh, coaching program. And, uh, these are the three ways that we, uh, typically will, um, build up and add, uh, in, well, I'll say compound, um, the metabolism uh, to our gain uh, or loss, uh, depending. And so um, the, the way to look at this is um, to look at it as a triangle. Um, pick a point, doesn't matter where we're at, but um, let's start at the top. And so what we have is we have uh, our nutrition, and then over here we have our, um, our uh, resistance training, and then here we have cardiovascular. And so um, when somebody focuses on just one of these, they're really shortchanging their metabolism. Um, putting them all together, the blend of those is what makes an effective metabolic program. Um, and so the very first thing is to look at your uh, metabolism for what it can do within nutrition. So we know that um, utilizing a, or creating a deficit is one way to begin um, to burn body fat. So whenever you're consuming less than what you're, um, than what you're burning, at that point you're absolutely going to uh, be losing as long as you're not having, uh, you know, you don't have metabolic damage and things like that. So we'll, we'll hit metabolic damage on another video, but this one here I want to talk about specifically what goes into effect um, with the nutrition aspect of uh, speeding up the metabolism or at least utilizing the metabolism to the absolute best possible scenario. Um, so the, the way to look at this is to view your metabolism like a fire. Um, and the fact is, is that your meals would be just like throwing wood on the fire. So this is in the conventional sense. Um, I teach a lot of flexible nutrition, things like that, to where there are some different things that I will teach, um, that timing is not everything. However, um, there absolutely, the science does lend to that, uh, timing for nutrition plays a big role, um, you know, to getting your metabolism reawakened. Um, so nevertheless, your metabolism is like a fire. Um, when we throw big, huge meals or logs onto this fire, the fire begins to smolder out and, uh, and die out. So it does not have the, um, the potential to burn for as long. And so, um, again, much in the same way, whenever we, you know, do big meals on our metabolism, you know, our metabolism does not, uh, stay as active as it needs to. There's a lot of different, um, uh, metaphors or analogies that I can create specifically that would kind of, um, you know, showcase why, what happened, you know, what the brain happened, you know, what happens in the brain, the signals, um, your IGF one, all that different stuff. But again, most people, again, what they don't want to hear about that. I don't want to lose you guys, um, and some of the, uh, the chemical responses and all that. So again, what I want to do is liken it to a fire, a fire that where you throw small pieces of kindling all throughout the day, that fire begins to burn very, very intensely and intensify as the day goes on. Um, it actually begins to get white hot, you know, by the end of the day. So, um, much like your metabolism, when you're eating smaller meals um, spread out over the course of five to six meals instead of two to three, now at this point your metabolism is staying active and it's burning at its uh, absolute brightest. Um, and so right whenever it's time to go to sleep at that point, 
We've got a fire that's absolutely, um, even though we're not throwing on any extra kindling, it's so hot that it just, the coals and uh, the embers are so white hot all through the night. And uh, you know, just as to the next day you wake up and this thing is still white hot, but now it's, there's not a flame. You throw just another piece of kindling back on it and poof, back up, there's this huge, um, you know, flame that pops back up because the metabolism or the fire has stayed so, so conditioned. Um, and so this is the first way to utilize uh, the metabolism regarding the nutrition aspects so that the more often you're eating, um, you know, the better it's going to be for conditioning the metabolism. Now, keep in mind, I'm not stating that this overshadows um, or will negate um, focusing on taking in the right amount of calories. If you are consuming all healthy foods and you're eating six times a day and you're doing these small meals and you're either underdoing it on your calories or you're over consuming calories by even if it's four or 500 calories, you're going to gain body fat, I can promise you. Um, that surplus is what will cause that. Um, so we can't overlook that, however, um, just speaking for the metabolism, this is one way that we compound and we get the metabolism working at a much, much higher result. Um, so now the second part of the, uh, of the triangle, we're looking at resistance training. When people do get the notion that you can burn a lot of calories through, um, through resistance training, um, they know that they need to shape their muscle, so on and so forth. Um, unfortunately, what they do is they break up cardiovascular activity and, um, uh, and resistance training. And I'm not saying that that doesn't have a place. Um, again, if you're looking for hypertrophy or major muscle building, um, that, you know, I would recommend doing, you know, like the, the standard, um, lifting that's like that so that you're focusing all of your energy on every single muscle, um, for, uh, you know, rest, recovery, blah, blah, blah. Um, but for the general fitness population, people wanting to get into shape and not trying to win bodybuilding contests, um, this is where um, I would definitely recommend blending your cardiovascular activity with your resistance training. Because what most people do is that they will go and they will sit on a machine, they'll do a few reps, they'll go to the next machine, they have no idea if it's the, the right muscle group, how to put muscle groups together. They have no idea what rep scheme to use, um, if they're lifting or if they're moving that resistance or weight uh, appropriately. There's a lot of factors. And so unfortunately, this becomes a very lackluster uh, performance for resistance training. So the muscles might get a little bit of stimulation, but not much. Um, so again, you're really talking about, you know, 100, 150 calories being burned um, in a very long time. So even if you're you know, spending 45 minutes on this um, and you're having this lackluster performance because you're not really utilizing the muscles like you should, um, you're slowly going from machine to machine, you don't know, you know uh, about elongating the muscle uh, appropriately or contracting the muscle maximally, those sort of things all play a role. So I'll come back to the resistance training but we're gonna to go to the cardiovascular training. Now, this is where a lot of uh, women that I have worked with fall prey to. They believe that uh, cardiovascular activity or doing any form of cardio whatsoever is the key to getting into shape and burning off body fat. While cardio does burn calories, a lot of people will get on there and do a steady state cardio. And unfortunately, studies show that it takes upwards of 22 minutes for the metabolism to actually switch over to burning uh, body fat instead of just utilizing the uh, your food source as fuel um, and, and or burning the glycogen um, from the uh, from the muscle. So the key here is that if you're doing a 30 or 45 minute workout, the first 22 minutes really aren't doing what you're hoping to do. Uh, not to mention the fact that it really does nothing for the, um, the elusive afterburn effect that I've talked about before too. Uh, and then of course you've got the time that's being spent and the fact that um, it's really difficult to build muscle 
um, for the body, which again stimulates the metabolism. So we've got a pretty big problem if your focus is only on cardio. So now we can put the two together so that you're doing a cardio um, workout before or after your resistance training. Um, and let's say that it's a super intense workout on both of those. The issue is now that you're looking at about an hour and a half of activity. Um, and that's uh, typically uh, very cumbersome. It doesn't, you know, that doesn't fit in most people's schedules. Um, and then of course the fact is, is that your, when you're uh, working out, if you're working out intensely enough on your workout, uh, one of those things is going to suffer a little bit, uh, firstly. And then of course the, uh, second thing to keep in mind is that, um, when you're spending all of this time on there like that, um, and you're focusing on the, the 90 minute course, etc. Um, unfortunately, usually within 45 to 60 minutes of your workout, you go into what's called a catabolic state. Um, and that catabolic state is where the muscle actually begins. Um, it, well, catabolic is going to be muscle deteriorating. Anabolic is going to be muscle building. And so we, we want to keep you in an anabolic or an anti-catabolic state so that we are um, building the most muscle and burning the most fat in our, um, in our workouts. So this is all, you know, things, and I don't teach this quite so fast um, in my, I break things down way, way more in my coaching program, but these are all of the factors that play a role in the metabolism, um, at least the, the nuts and bolts of the metabolism. There's uh, metabolism repair, um, decreasing cortisol. There's a lot of different um, factors that I implement in my coaching programs that we go through. Um, and then of course, mindset and things like that. But these are the pillars. Um, so back to the resistance training, what we do is we fuse those together. And most people by now should know what um, high intensity interval training is or, um, you know, cross training. Um, people have heard of CrossFit, of P90X. These are all various forms and facets of cross training. Um, they might have a different name, a different brand, a different label, whatever, but they're all interval style training. The purpose of this is number one, it does create an afterburn effect so that you're actually burning a greater amount of calories for up to 30 hours after your workout. Um, that's the first one. So even at rest, your, your metabolism is burning higher than normal. The second thing that it's doing is you're actually burning a lot more calories in a shorter amount of time. So when you're doing, um, you know, squats and then you go into something that elevates the heart rate but rests that muscle, like jumping jacks or burpees or something to that effect, um, now again, we're elevating the heart rate and then letting it come back down. We're stimulating the muscle and then stimulating a different muscle. And it allows us to put a greater output um, in a shorter amount of time, we stimulate the metabolism and burn a crap ton of freaking calories within that 30 minutes. So not only are we shortening the amount of time that you have to spend to get where you want to go, we're burning more calories um, during the workout and we're actually continuing to elevate the amount of calories we burn for the remainder of the day. So what I do is, um, in the past, if a client worked with me two or three times a week, I would have them do some form of workout when they weren't with me. So that if we know that the metabolism is staying elevated for 30 hours or so, give or take, um, and then they're working out every two to three days, unfortunately there is a, a dormant space um, in that in between that the metabolism isn't firing like it should, or at least not to, we're not taking advantage of the full power. So if I have my client doing, um, you know, more often uh, of a workout and doing it in this way, now we're really compounding some, um, uh, some calorie burn and the metabolism. So my coaching program, I have my clients do five workouts a week um, and that's all built into the cost that they, um, that they get. So instead of paying for sessions and things like that, and then only being able to do two to three sessions a week with me, and then hoping that their workouts are good enough in between, I write up all five of their workouts for them. And then we, um, essentially focus on just being active on the rest days so that we're keeping the metabolism going. And so that we're just in that burn mode constantly. 
So these are the sort of things that um, when you implement all together and they're all put together in the right form and facet, um, you're hitting all the muscle groups like you should, um, you're you know focusing on um, really working out with intensity, but not so much that you're getting sick or overtraining. All of these things come together and build a maximum, maximally performing machine. And this is where you start noticing major changes. Um, you might have seen some of my clients that uh, some of the before and afters. This is how they do that. Um, this is how they do that in 30 minutes or less a day, um, no less. And with being able to choose foods, um, you know, they're going to choose healthy foods, but they're also going to be able to get foods like slices of pizza. Um, and one of my clients loves gummy bears and, um, you know, things like that. So these things all come into effect. And so now when we have a short workout that can fit into almost any schedule, we have flexible nutrition that fits into almost any lifestyle. We have a metabolism that's firing like when we were in high school um, and workouts with every detail, no thinking about if my workout is, a, is doing the right thing, um, no need to have a gym membership. All of these things come together like my clients get and now you're looking at really creating a massive transformation and better yet, that transformation is permanent, which is why my uh, program is called the Permanent Transformation Formula, um, because it doesn't matter if you get some great results in a short amount of time and you're not able to sustain or keep those results. Um, it's absolutely irrelevant at that point, because it, uh, typically um, what I see is if somebody loses, it gets into shape and doesn't learn uh, habits that are uh, prolonged and something that keeps them sustainable for you know years to come um, unfortunately they not only gain it back but they gain back and then some so my purpose is not to create uh, codependency or dependency upon me my goal in my methods are to teach people to have a sustainable balanced um, fitness life that keeps them at the peak uh, confidence and, um, and, and allows them to still have time with their families and to choose foods and have a relationship with food that is healthy and that they're able to not feel deprived. Um, and so this is how I do that. So um, I've got a, um, a challenge coming up January 2nd. It's a 21 day flat belly challenge. Um, I will be giving out more information over the weekend um, but that one there is something that uh, comes with a meal plan, um, comes with uh, recipes and guides. Um, there's uh, five workouts a week. Um, this is basically um, going to be a, a great jumpstart challenge into my program to show people a little bit of what I can do um, and how my program is different from other programs out there or training on your own or training with a trainer, different things like that. So. Um, I will put the link um, below for my 14 day challenge, or excuse me, for my 14 day trial. Um, everybody who does the 14 day trial, I will be um, putting into the 21 day uh, challenge. I just have not finished the page um, for people to get activated on there. So um, for now, if you have any questions on my 21 day uh, challenge, please send me a message. Um, and then I will get you started on that as well. Um, give you information on um, cost of that and uh, in getting started and adding you into the, uh, the group uh, over the weekend so that you can get your groceries and all of that stuff too. So um, anyway, I hope that this uh, video helps you. If it did help you, please like or love the video. Um, comment, let me know what your thoughts are. If there was something that you liked or that you picked up specifically, um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Um, share the video if you feel like this can help somebody. Or if uh, you've got a friend that you want to do the uh, 21 day challenge with, please share the video, tag them in it, or tag them in this one here. Um, whatever you want to do. Um, again, thanks for tuning in. And uh, being that it's Friday, I will see you guys back on, uh, let's see, I think uh, January 1st is Monday, so we'll probably see you back Tuesday, um, unless I decide to do an extra video on Monday. But um, nevertheless, uh, reach out this weekend, um, send me a message and I will, uh, I'll get you activated for the 21 day challenge. You can also send me an email at lance.carone, C-A-R-O-N at permanentfitness.net. And, uh, and I will get back with you pretty quickly to get you set up. So thanks guys for tuning in and I will catch you later.